Okay, in this section I want to talk to you about just measuring basic staircases. Now, in this case I chose one that goes up, has a landing, and comes back up, which is pretty common. The easiest ones, of course, are straight up and down. If you have a staircase, if this one just went straight up, it's real simple. Just take that space, if you're on the upper level, you would take that space, push it up, measure length times width, and include that on the second level square footage. Now, in this case, we're basically going to measure from this wall, we're going to get a length measure, then we're going to step up here, and we're going to take a width measure. All right, this particular set of stairs actually measures about 71 square feet. Now that's not a huge amount of space, but 71 square feet in this particular house is probably 120, 125 dollars a square foot. That's enough to make a sizable difference. And it's one of those areas where a professional should know the difference. Agents and appraisers often handle staircases differently. And actually, stairs is the area that first brought me to looking about square footage. Of course, I had already worked as a broker for 10 years. When I became an appraiser, my instructor taught me how to measure a completely different way. Staircases were not counted on the second level. His philosophy was, if you couldn't walk on it upstairs, then it was not finished living area, or GLA, the appraiser called it. But once I became an appraiser and understood that difference, the, I started reading ANSI and, of course, found the North Carolina Residential Square Footage Guidelines. And they're very clear about this measurement. There's no gray area. It specifically says that any time you count a staircase, this space is counted on the first or the main level, regardless of the slope underneath it regardless of whether there's a closet or a bathroom under the staircase, whatever it is, or if there's nothing. It doesn't matter. It's still counted as finished square footage on the first level, and it's also pushed up and counted in the second level. Now, if you're standing upstairs, basically you've got the, remember the up, the landing, and then the section that goes up. You're just basically taking this bottom step and pushing it up so that it covers that hole, basically. And then you just take the square footage of that square and include that in the upper level square footage. So just remember, stairs shouldn't be complicated at all. Measure the space included on the first level square footage and also include it on the second level square footage. Let's just say if you've had a low appraisal for anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars, that little piece of information could have saved your sale. And I have to tell you, the, when I was still a broker, I attended a class with a 30-year veteran real estate instructor, and he taught us the three measurement methods: the ANSI method, the North Carolina method and the appraiser's method. Well, I'm here to tell you there is not an appraiser's method. Appraisers are required to do what is locally acceptable, and it's up to them to decide what that is. So if you're working with an appraiser, ask them if they follow the North Carolina Residential Square Footage Guidelines. And if not, why not? Best represent your customer, get them to follow that guideline. And they should be measuring this space the same way that you are required by state law to measure. So anyway, check with the appraisers in your area and see how they handle stairs and square footage. Okay, let's move on to the next measure.